Hello, everybody. This is Mrs. Hammond. I've come to talk to you for a few minutes today. I have somebody special sitting here on my lap. I'm going to pick him up so you can get a good look at him. This is Toby. He's a member of our family. Today, I'm going to talk to you about families and how important they are to us. And uh, Toby's important to us, especially because all of our children are grown up and moved away. And so we like having him in our house. We think he's a member of the family. Maybe you have a furry member of your family too. I'm gonna to put him down on the floor right now. He doesn't usually sit on my lap for very long at a time where I would just keep him up here. I want to uh, talk to you about families today. As I said, our children are all grown up and moved away. Uh, but when our children were younger, we had these special friends, Frank and Irma, and we would go to their house a lot and they came here sometimes. And our children just grew to love them and they called them Uncle Frank and Aunt Irma because they just considered them to be a part of our family. And you may have somebody at your house that you do the same with. Does it, a member of your family can be anybody that you really care about and cares about you. And of course it can be grandmothers and grandfathers and cousins and aunts and uncles. These are all members of your family. And today I'm going to read a story to you that comes from the New Testament, the book of Mark, and it's the story of a man and his daughter. And I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to uh, just pretend that I'm the man in the story. The name of the story is called A Desperate Father. It came from Mark chapter 5, verses 21, 24, and 35 to 43. So remember now, when I'm talking, it's going to be Jarius that's talking. Good morning. When I heard that you were learning that Jesus cares about our families, I just had to come and spend some time with you. You see, Jesus did something for my family that I'll never, ever forget. His, my name is Jarius, and I'm leader, a leader of the synagogue in the city of Capernaum. A synagogue is like a Jewish church. People come to the synagogue to worship God, pray, listen to the priests, and read from the scriptures. When we heard that Jesus was coming to our town, everyone was excited. Well, almost everyone. Some of the Jewish leaders here and in Jerusalem think Jesus is a fake. I don't agree. No one but the Son of God could do the miracles that Jesus does. But I've learned to keep quiet about my opinions so that I don't get in trouble. My story is about my daughter. She's a 12-year-old bundle of energy and laughter and love. One night, my wife heard our daughter cry out in her sleep. She got up to see what was wrong and then came running back to me. Jarius, Jarius, she cried, shaking my shoulder. Our daughter is burning up with fever. I don't know what's wrong. What shall we do? We sat by her bed the rest of the night, but there was nothing we could do to help her. By morning, she didn't even know who we were. A hard lump of fear knotted in my chest. She's going to die, isn't she? My wife asked. Just then I heard some of our neighbors out in the street. Come down to the lake, they shouted to anyone who would listen. Jesus, the teacher from, Naz the teacher from Nazareth, is there. If anyone can help our daughter, Jesus can, I told my wife excitedly. If I could just get him to come here. Hurry then, Jarius, my wife urged. Go quickly. You must come get him to come here before it's too late. 
I found Jesus in the middle of a huge crowd of people. Let me through, I cried. I pushed and shoved until I finally got through. Then I fell at Jesus' feet. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live, I begged. Jesus agreed to come. We must hurry, I urged. But then a woman touched Jesus' robe and was healed. When Jesus stopped to talk to her, I almost panicked. Then I felt one of my servants tucking at my sleeve. Your daughter is dead, he said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Before I could respond, Jesus looked me straight in the eye. Don't be afraid, he said, just believe. I tried to believe, what else could I do? When we arrived at my house, Jesus asked the mourners, why are you crying and making so much noise? That child is not dead, only asleep. Some people laughed at Jesus, but I kept on praying that he was right. We went to the bed where she lay all white and still. He took her hand and commanded, young girl, I tell you to stand up. And she stood up, ran to my wife and me, and gave us a big hug. Jesus smiled at us as we stood there hugging and crying. He gently reminded us to give our daughter something to eat, and then he left. I'll never forget that day. I learned that Jesus really does care about families, and not only families in Bible time. Jesus cares about your family right now in our time. In, uh, there are some Bible verses in another ch uh, book of the Bible, Colossians, Colossians 3, 12 through 21. If you uh, would care to read those to yourself, please do that. Um, in these verses, it talks about being a member of a loving family and some of the responsibilities and things that we need to do to keep the family going. And one thing they tell you is to forgive quickly. And sometimes when we're living so close together and confined to our homes these days because of the COVID, we have to remember that. It's time to just not worry too much about what's happening and forgive quickly. Sometimes we just want something really badly and our brother or sister doesn't want to do that or they want it for themselves. And it's hard to forgive when things like that happen, but just remember, it's your family and you need to love everybody in the family and be kind and patient with them and talk to them and ex tell them how you're feeling and count on them being kind to you. If you're kind to somebody, then it's more likely they're gonna return their kindness to you. We need each other in our families. Jesus cares about today's families. And sometimes it's hard for us in a family to remember to let our family know that we appreciate them and that we do care for them and that we're glad that they're there and we're glad that they do some things for us. So one thing that you can do is make some thank you cards. Maybe your brother or sister, your grandmother, somebody in your family does something nice. And it's so special if you make them a card. I think, especially, I know I'm a grandma, so I love it if I get a homemade card. I like that better than one that was bought in a store sometimes. I made some samples of cards that you might want to try to make, or maybe you have a way of making your card yourself. All you need is some paper and some writing tools, pencil, crayons, paints, anything that you might have at your house. They all work. They're all good. Do you remember the last time I talked to you on this video? I talked to you about Mr. Scribble. Well, you could use Mr. Scribble to make a thank you card. 
you just do a scribble, put two eyes at the top, put a happy mouth on him because he's a happy person. He's happy that you've done something nice for him. And some arms and some legs, and he's done. Any way you want those arms and legs to look is good. This, this is a little trick that I use for making cards and decorating cards sometimes. I uh, put a little border around it. And you can use any kind of border that you want, but this one's so easy to do. Let me show you what I have here on this piece of paper. You just make a curvy line, and then you draw a heart and a heart, wherever you want that heart to be. And then in between the hearts, you put some little dots and they turn into flowers. So the hearts become leaves and I usually make them in green. And the flowers can be any color that you want them to be. And then in the middle, you can write, thank you. Now to make this card, I took a sheet of computer paper and I folded it one time and then two times to make that shape of card. This card with Mr. Scribble on, I, this is pink computer paper, and I just folded it one time. So those two cards are pretty easy to do. Then I, here's another one that I made that is made out of hearts also. Uh, you may have seen this before. But I had a young girl show this to me a couple years ago, and I thought, what a nifty idea. And to make this, it's a little hard to see here. Let me show you this one I have in black and white. You just make a circle of hearts. You draw a heart, and then draw another one right beside it. Three hearts, four hearts, five hearts. Now, if your hearts are small, maybe you could put six in there. Or if they're big, you could use just four. And then you can, if you want to, you can add a stem with some leaves. And that's what I did here. Now, I added a few extra lines to this heart flower because I couldn't see where the heart separated. So I put a little dark mark there and there. And I put a little dark in the middle just to help it stand out a little bit. You can shade it any way you want to do it. And uh, when you draw a leaf, it's a good idea to put a line right down through the middle because that's what leaves have. It's usually a line right down through the middle. Another one that's not too hard to make if you have, this one is especially easy to make if you have some stamp pads at your house. I didn't have any. So I made this one and I think stamp pads would work better. But I took my thumb and I dipped it in some paint and I made five thumb prints across the top for the word thank, T-H-A-N-K, and three thumb, thumb prints here for the word you. And then I put a little curvy line on it and it turned into a balloon. So there, that's a thank you balloon card. And on this one, I folded the paper all the way across, made it a long card. And then you could open it up and write something inside if you wanted to. Don't forget to sign your name to the cards that you make. And the last card that I made is a little more difficult to make, but some of you older folks might like to do this. I used painter's tape. Now, painter's tape is nice because you put it on something, but then it pulls away easily. It's usually blue. Sometimes it's green. And you can buy it at the paint store. So maybe at your house you have some painter's tape in with the paints that you might have at your home. But I made the letter T with this tape. This is the only tape I had. I would have rather had narrower tape. It would have been easier to do, but this was all that I had, so I made a T. And I did this on a long sheet of paper. This is a heavier weight paper, which is nice for cards. And 
the letters for thanks, T-H-A-N-K-S. I made those all with blue tape. Then I took crayons and I colored over and around it. I changed my colors as I went down the line. You could do it all in one color or whatever. When you have it out, when you haven't finished, chalk would work with, with this. Just run your chalk right over the tape. And then when you pull the tape away, where the tape was, it will be white. Where the tape wasn't, it will be the color that you put on there. So a little more tricky to do, but if you need a project, you might wanna to try to make one of those. So, I hope that you can understand today that it is so important that you have a happy family, that you are kind to the people in your family, and that you remember them by saying thank you to them. That's very special. And if you have somebody like our Uncle Frank and Aunt Irma that's real special, you can write a thank you note to them too because they were as close to us as family. I'm going to read a little prayer in closing here. If you'd like to close your eyes and bow your head, please do that. Dear Lord, thank you for caring about our families. Remind us this week to show love and appreciation to each member of our families. Help us to be slow to get angry and quick to forgive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for spending some time with me, and I hope to be able to see you before too long. Things are looking better. Hopefully by this summer we can be back in church. Keep our fingers crossed and say some prayers. Bye now.